link. Here we go again. Hey there guys, what is up? I've had a couple of different people asking me for this video. Um, as anybody who's interested in a 2020 MacBook Air probably knows, it has the potential to be an absolutely tremendous laptop, but its Achilles heel is its heat dissipation. Uh, it's known for getting up to 100 degrees Celsius pretty quickly and staying there, which really hinders performance. There are a couple of things that we can do to try to mitigate this. If you want to go on the more extreme end, you can install a copper shim between the CPU and the heatsink, uh, and then top that off with some better thermal paste. Um, in my case, since I've been worried about warranty support and making sure that I had the ability to exchange it, I just slapped a thermal pad in between the CPU heatsink and the bottom of the chassis itself. And that does two things really. It takes up some volume above the heatsink, which means that air is forced to travel underneath the thermal pad and thus through the heatsink. And then it also kind of pseudo connects the heatsink itself to the aluminum chassis which means uh, we have more surface area for more heat dissipation. Now this is a really simple task that I genuinely believe anybody out there can accomplish with just a little bit of forethought, some ambition, and a few things. Obviously you're gonna need a MacBook Air that you're tired of overheating. Uh, before you start, make sure it's turned off. You're gonna need a thermal pad. In my case, I use this Arctic Blue. I'll have a video a link in the video description. And then you're also going to need a P5 pentalobe screwdriver. I have this really nice iFixit case. Uh, they're not a sponsor. It's a shameless plug, yes, but I'm, I'm not getting paid for it. I just really like it. All right, so like I said, before you begin, make sure that your laptop is off. Get a nice soft surface that you can set your laptop on top of. And all you're gonna do is start removing the 10 screws that hold the bottom of your case on. So this thermal pad isn't going to completely solve all the MacBook Air's problems, but I do, in my opinion, think it, it greatly mitigates them. So this with a thermal pad is the laptop that I expected to get from Apple. Yeah, it's not gonna run a bunch of uh, CPU intensive applications very well, but that's just because it's a relatively slower processor. I mean, uh, Apple and Intel have done some trickery here, so at some point it's, it stops requesting speeds much above two gigahertz and I think eventually it settles around 1.8. So our, our goal is to try and hit that 1.8 because beyond that we've got diminishing returns. So while it may not run a bunch of VMs or Adobe Premiere very well, uh, let's talk about what it will do. 4K video on YouTube will go off without a hitch. Video conferencing will go off without a hitch. All of these things I'd hope would be obvious but users have reported having issues with them. So in my, my case, I typically like to run Slack, Tidal, which is lossless audio, um, a bunch of Chrome tabs, like 12 to 24 Chrome tabs at a time. And then I might have Photoshop and Dreamweaver running in the background, not really doing anything intensive. Since I did this mod, I've had it lock up on me once and in two seconds it was, it was done. All right, so once you get all 10 screws off, you can see we've got these two tabs here in the middle. Just take three fingers, stick two fingernails underneath the bottom, and then one finger on the monitor hinge, apply a modest amount of pressure, and it should pop off without an issue. Now, like I said, I've already done this mod. This is what most of you will be looking at. This right here is our CPU and our GPU. Um, cold air comes in over here and is expelled over here. The fact that there's no heat pipe here really, really isn't that much of an issue, okay? This is a design that Ultra Thins have been using since their conception and servers have been using for decades. I've been working on servers for years. I've only ever had one overheat. This design works. The one that overheated was a 135 watt processor in an unair un conditioned warehouse. I think it gets a pass. You can see here is our thermal pad. Uh, I think this was a 20 by 20 by one and a half mil thermal pad. Sorry, there was a piece of dust. Um, the one and a half mil works just fine. I think you can see there's some discoloration right here on the heat sink. And then if I come over here to the base of the computer, there's similar discoloration there. That's fine. It's not hurting anything. I merely point that out to show that it made contact. I suspect these are kind of tacky. I suspect they're kind of tacky because they're meant to ooze this oil out similar to thermal paste, right? So Obviously the surface of this heat sink is not perfectly smooth and we want as much surface area as possible. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trim this down to size. I'm gonna lay it on top of that. I'm going to stick the bottom of my computer back on, apply pressure until those two, two tabs pop. There we go. 
I'm going to locate the screws that I just lost. And then I'm going to start putting my screws back in. Now, if any of you are worried about cross-threading screws, I have a bit of a tip for that. Drop the screw in the hole, apply extremely light pressure to stop the screwdriver, and start loosening it, right? Turn it counterclockwise until you hear it pop. There you go. That way you know the screw is set into place, and we can proceed with tightening it down. So this is an extremely simple process. I genuinely believe that anybody can do this. The hardest part of it all, honestly, is gonna be uh, choosing a thermal pad, which I've done for you. I'll leave a link in the video description, and then finding this P5 screwdriver. Um, you can get it direct from iFixit, or you can go on Amazon. I'll try to leave a link down below for that as well. And get free prime shipping goodness. There we go, there's the pop. Drop this one in place. I've done this video so many times now. For some reason or another, my OCD has just bothered me and I keep remaking it. I think the first one ended up being like an 11 minute video. I know YouTube prefers people to keep it under 10 minutes. And then the second one, I just, I got off sidetracked. Yeah. So the other thing that is super common for people to do is that copper shim mod. Uh, while I am satisfied with the performance with just the thermal pad, I've already spent money on shims. So I'll probably go ahead and do a video on that as well down the road. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with it, but I know some people have been hesitant to take apart a brand new $1,200 laptop and understandably so. But like I said, all of this is super simple. Once you get over the fear of taking apart a laptop, let alone one as expensive as this, it really is child's play. If you're watching this and you're, you know, ambitious and of average intelligence at least, or something close to it, you'll be fine. And you know, like most things in life, if you're nervous, just take your time and be careful. Don't lose screws like I have. Anyway, pretend I put that back in. Um, oh, hey, I found it. Thank you, Dbrand, for that wonderful skin, preventing it from scratching my laptop. Stick that guy in. Already made sure that the other nine were tight. You don't want to crank down on these, by the way. Um, if you're worried about one slipping out, which you honestly shouldn't be, uh, do the same thing that Apple and every other laptop manufacturer in the world does and just stick some blue Loctite in there. At this point, we are done. All you want to do is open it up, let it power on. If it catches on fire, you did something wrong. If you see the Apple logo, boom, you're done. It really is all that simple, guys. If you're watching this, you can do it. Um, hop on Amazon, get you a thermal pad, hit up iFixit for the, the P5 screwdriver. This is legitimately one of the nicest screwdrivers I've ever used in my life. You pay a premium, but once you have it, you have just about everything you'll ever need, plus an extension, which is quite nice. And you'll never have to buy it again. So that's it, guys. Uh, leave any comments down below. If you want me to cover anything else, let me know. Um, I will leave a link to the Mac Rumors forum where we have a, some really good discussions on thermals and the various ways we've tried to mitigate them. Uh, yeah, leave me a like. I'd say subscribe, but I don't know how many other videos I'm going to have. Bottom line, you got this. Thanks, guys.